Hi friends, hope you are doing well. I'm Dr. Ganguly. Welcome to my channel. So today I'll answer a question from a viewer and this question is when should we start applying for a postdoc position? So I'm going to give two answers to this question based on whether you are planning to apply for a foundation postdoc, for example, postdocs such as Humboldt, JSPS, Swiss National, etc or whether you are applying for a postdoc job, which is essentially advertised in typical web pages in Google, in indeed.com and so on. So let's look at these two aspects about how to apply for the postdoc and when to apply for the postdoc. So if we look at the foundation postdoc, I will say that you should start the process one year before you are planning to give your PhD defense examination. So essentially you need to figure out a good deadline or date for your PhD exam and then start one year before. Now, why do you need so much time is because the first big problem in foundation postdocs is trying to get a host for your fellowship. And whether you're applying for Humboldt, Swiss National, JSPS, Fulbright, or any of these government sponsored or foundation sponsored postdocs you will see that one of the important things is trying to find a host at a university or research institution who is going to be your supervisor during your postdoctoral work now once you have found this host you need to figure out a proposal which you are going to write with this host and essentially the host is going to ask you to write a proposal in conjunction with him. The proposal should be such that it satisfies both you and the host. So this entire process takes a lot of time. So in fact, in my experience for the Humboldt Fellowship and the Fulbright Fellowship, I found that it took months to find a host and then it took maybe a month or two to draft a proper proposal for these projects. So this is going to take a lot of time. So it is a good idea to begin this process at least a year before you are planning to finish your PhD. Now, once you have figured out the host and you have figured out the proposal, the remaining things are quite fast. You need to essentially fill in the application form. You need to attach your curriculum vitae, your publications. You need to give the names and contacts of two to three references and so on. So again, you need some time to make sure that your references know that you are applying for this position or this fellowship so that they can write a proper letter for you. So I would say this entire process takes a lot of time and therefore it's a good idea to give a lot of time to this process. Now, once your things are through, some of the postdocs even have an interview. So be prepared for a 15 minute interview in some cases. So you need to make a preparation for the interview with the basic outline of your PhD, make about five to 10 slides, which essentially define your PhD work. Or if you are able to make a coherent presentation just by talking, then you can do that. But I still suggest that you make at least one or two slides and lay out the point because it's kind of difficult to talk extempore without a script in case the person wants to meet you. Now, in many cases, the prospective host may actually want to talk to you also. So it's not like the whole correspondence may take by email. He may decide to give you a call on Zoom or Team or Skype as the case may be and talk to you for 15 minutes or even an hour in some cases and let you make an entire presentation about your work and so on. So you need to be prepared for all this. So in any case, if you are applying for a foundation postdoc, I think at least one journal paper is a requirement because this is the PDF file which you are going to send to this person when you send your email so that you can get a host. So that's something to keep in mind. Now, one of the things about foundation postdocs is that once they are offered, it's always possible to extend them at least by some amount of time. So I had this experience in the case of both the Humboldt as well as the Fulbright fellowships that I was able to extend these. And I was actually forced to do that because the visa process takes a long time. So if you are in one of these countries where a visa is required to go for a 
postdoc somewhere else then that process itself may take three to six months so essentially once you have got the postdoc you can ask for an extension and then you can apply for the visa whatever visa category you need to apply for now one of the things about the foundation postdoc is that the visa process is typically not very difficult unless you are working in one of those security related areas in which case if you are applying to the US you may be subject to the 221G or the pink slip problem and in that case this process may take three to six months but one of the advantages of having a foundation postdoc is in many cases they can extend it but I would say the maximum extension may be something like six months to one year but the people who are managing these postdocs are generally very receptive to any email you send them so they will suddenly give you a quick feedback about your case so these foundations are typically stopped staffed by people who display a lot of alacrity in terms of their response now let's look at the second type of postdoc which is more widespread and sometimes it is easier to get as a first postdoc if you are finishing your phd and that is the job postdoc now essentially these are the postdoctoral positions which are advertised in various forums so if you look at indeed.com and search for postdoctoral research positions in certain countries you are going to get these jobs out there if you search in google for postdoctoral research jobs you are going to get out there and so on and you can actually specifically target particular countries if you are planning to apply to some countries for postdoc so if you are looking for postdoc positions in new zealand you can look at that and again google or indeed or any of these sites are going to throw lot of these positions at you so again these are essentially jobs what has happened is that the professor or researcher has got a large grant and he needs somebody to do the research so he's looking for phds so in this case he's going to move very quickly he is going to have a set of cvs in front of him he's going to produce these cvs and then he's going to call up some of these people set up phone interviews with them and then he is going to make a decision about this postdoctoral position pretty quickly give you an offer letter from the university now here this process may actually be done in one month or so and so most of your time will actually go in trying to search for these positions and then suddenly you may get the postdoc so this is the best situation for many people and I would say you should start this process three months before your PhD defense because if you start too much in advance then you will have a situation where this person will say that uh, i need this postdoc right now and you may even get the offer but you won't be able to join because in most situations they do require the phd degree to be finished but there are some cases where they may actually take a person who is all but defended and therefore what may happen in that case is they may give you the postdoc you may get some kind of letter from the university that you have essentially submitted your thesis or something like that and then later get your thesis so these things are also sometimes possible in some cases people actually join for a postdoc even before they have submitted their thesis and they try to submit their thesis a month or two later but i would recommend you don't do this because in some cases you may actually not be able to get the phd later on you may lose momentum once you have left your own university and your advisor so keep that in mind it's always better to get the phd degree once you have spent so many years on it and then go for the postdoctoral position now in the case of the postdoc job the bigger problem may be the visa so if you are in one of those countries where you need a visa to apply you will need to apply for the visa and in many countries it's quite a simple process so if you are applying to some place like Singapore or Korea or Japan it's not going to be very difficult but if you are applying to US or UK it may be more difficult process especially in the US you may be subject to the 214B requirement or the 221G requirement if you do not know these things then check out my videos on these topics which I will put on the end screen now some of the European countries are pretty good in terms of giving visa for various postdoctoral positions so I would always recommend them and 
then you can later think about applying to some different countries. Now, one possibility I would tell you is that in many cases, it may be advantageous to apply for a job type postdoc before and as your first postdoc. So this could be the postdoc which you immediately get at the end of your PhD. And maybe after doing this postdoc for one year or so, if you are not happy or if you want further growth, you can apply for the foundation postdoc. And in that situation, what happens is that you already have your PhD degree done. You are in some country or in some good university and your CV has become better looking. And then what has happened is that your chances of getting a foundation postdoc have become greater. So this is one strategy to follow a two postdoc process that you first jump into a job postdoc and then you make another jump into a foundation postdoc and then you can jump into a faculty position or become a research scientist or join a company depending on what are your long-term career goals. So this was my video for today and I will see you in a video sometime soon. See you then.